Hi everyone, welcome back to another Omicron update. Now it has been three weeks since the world learned about the Omicron variant and scientists around the globe are doing experiments and analyses every day and trying to know more about it. So how bad is Omicron variant? Let's find out. Now, according to the article and graphs from Financial Times, it is quite clear that Omicron has taken over the new COVID cases found in London in these couple of days. And assuming Omicron cases doubles every three days, then the projected Omicron infection could even reach a million people in the next few days. Now, even though 69% of UK residents are fully vaccinated, it does not appear to be stopping all the new cases. The small good news is that when we look closer, despite the exponential increase in new cases in the UK, so far COVID hospitalization is still holding steady. But the official messages from WHO warned against treating Omicron cases as a mild disease, particularly for those who have underlying health conditions and are unvaccinated. I do want to point out that unvaccinated is not the best term to describe the situation right now because there are two groups of unvaccinated people. The first group is unvaccinated but recovered from infection. In my previous Omicron update, even though we see that the risk of reinfection from Omicron is quite high, we have also looked at a preprint study showing T cell immunity from prior infection is likely able to protect people against severe disease. So the first group of unvaccinated people are not totally unprotected at this point. Now the second group of people are unvaccinated and never infected. Now these people have no immunity or very little basically against any SARS-CoV-2 variants, and I don't think any country are tracking the number of these people, but with recent Omicron surges, people with zero immunity would be fewer and fewer. Now, Back in the US, are we seeing trends of natural immunity in work? So here we are looking at two heat maps of average daily cases per 100,000 people in the last seven days. Now these graphs are provided by New York Times. The left hand side one was from uh, July Delta variant wave. Now this actually was a capture from my previous video made in July. And we see that at least two major hotspots in the summer, Florida and New Orleans, are not having uh, a lot of cases right now compared to the graph on the right hand side which as uh, of December 16th. Now the opposite is also true for majority of the northeast area where we didn't see a lot of cases in the summer in the northeast but now we are seeing a significant increase of COVID cases in the northeast area. But so far, the Omicron accounts for only about 3% of COVID cases in the US. Now, perhaps when you are watching this video, the number would be a little bit higher. But still, the majority of all the new cases are still because of the Delta variant. So the US current wave is not the same as what is happening in the UK. Now here are the two graphs comparing cases and hospitalization. Clearly we can see the difference. UK cases are increasing sharply but hospitalization rate are steady. On the other hand, US increasing cases also associated with the increase in number of patients in the hospital. So who are the people that are in the hospital in the US? Now we still see the most significant increase in people above 60 years old. But at the same time, close to 90% of 65 and up are fully vaccinated. So it appears that the protection from the two dose may be waning much more in the elderly group and natural immunity may not be playing a major role in this age group as well. So scientifically, why is the Omicron a dilemma? A preprint research from the University of Hong Kong showed that the Omicron viral particle found in bronchus replicates 70 times faster than the Delta variant. Now the bronchus is a little bit above the lung, so that may be why Omicron spread faster. But the Omicron viral particle found in the lung replicates 10 times slower 
than the original strain. That means Omicron does not replicate as efficiently in human lung tissue, which may suggest the reason for lower severity of the disease. But the research team also noted that severe COVID is also due to dysregulation of the innate immune system, which is also called cytokine storm, and it can be fatal. But because Omicron can replicate so fast, it is also likely to infect more people and poses a particular danger to people without or with very low immunity, such as those that are immunocompromised, and also elderly people with waning immunity. So the bottom line is that people 60 or 65 and above are still very vulnerable to the Omicron. Now it is very important to stay cautious. That is all for this quick update and I'll see you in my regular Sunday video. Please take care. Bye.